Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am broadcasting to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having or has had a great Friday so far. Uh, again, today it is an IELTS speaking part two. This is a members class. It was requested by one of our members. Hi, Ferdovs. Good to see you in class. And the materials are coming from our websites for amazing materials to help you with the exam. Check us out at aehelp.com for the academic version of the test and gieltshelp.com for the general. Now, this is a speaking class, so viewers, members, Patricio, Alexander, Shalini, Ivan, uh, make sure to repeat me as you hear me say sentences. So repeat, repeat, repeat. All right, I believe this question was actually uh, sent to us by Rahul. Um, again, for members, you get access to our six uh, practice exams, as well as you get to request classes. So keep that in mind, members. Send me requests. Marwa, I know you sent me a request. Hello. And I've scheduled that for tomorrow as well. So that's great. All right. If uh, students has, have questions, uh, send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com, and I will gladly answer. Rahul, there you are. I believe this is your question for today, if I'm not mistaken. And after this class, in about 90 minutes, we will have a listening class, uh, practice and example from our websites. Our websites are uh, aehelp.com or academicenglishhelp.com. That's this website here with the blue background. Click that red button to join or for the general module, go to this website here again, gieltshelp.com. Click that red button to join there. All right, let's get cracking. Let's get into today's lesson. So here is the cue card for our uh, speaking part two. Uh, is the font big enough? Can you see this clearly, students? I can maybe enlarge a little bit further. Here we go. There we go. Um, if it's not clear, please do let me know. All right. So again, uh, in the speaking, you have three parts. Part one, asking questions about you, your life on some general topic like hobbies or movies as we just did the other day. Uh, and then after a few minutes of general questions for part one, the examiner will say that is the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, I will uh, give you a card with some questions. Here it is. Please do not turn it over. Here's some note paper. Here's a pencil. You will have one minute to look at the questions, think about your answer, take notes if you wish, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. Are you ready? Members, are you ready? If the examiner asks you that, respond. Say, yes, I'm ready to go. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, or you can say, yes, let's do it. All right. And then they will say, uh, your one minute preparation time begins now. So you turn over the card and this is what you see. IELTS speaking part two, describe a typical marriage ceremony in your country. You should say the age couples usually marry. What type of clothing is usually worn? Who attends the ceremony? And describe any special customs uh, during the wedding ceremony. You will have one uh, minute to prepare what you're going to say, and you will have one to two minutes to speak. Fantastic. Uh, what is your first step, students? So you flip over that card right away. What should you recognize? What is the very first uh, thought? when you see this card that should come to mind? And this one is a fairly generous question, in my opinion. This one uh, should be fairly straightforward to answer. There are some challenging parts to it, but it should be fairly straightforward. Um, Begzad says, recognize that this is an event. Absolutely. 
yeah, so first step, identify that this is an event. Absolutely, it's a wedding ceremony, which is clearly an event. Now, uh, what do you need to think about? Even before you get into the details of the question, what do you need to remember when you speak about an event? Okay, what are the key points for consideration and for your notes when you're speaking about an event? So Begzad says location. Of course, we want to know where it takes place. So the card doesn't actually ask you that, ask you that but it's definitely a good thought to have. So the location, absolutely. Okay. What else? The purpose. Yeah. And even when you're talking about a wedding and it seems like the purpose is quite clear, you should consider it. You should think, okay, well, it's a wedding. Why do people get married? And what is the reason for that in my country? What's the purpose, right? Starting a family, uh, signaling uh, love between two people. So that's important. Don't just assume that it's understood by the examiner or by your listener. So definitely. Um, the appear Hong says the appearance of the event. Yeah, so describe what this event looks like. Sure, we can include that, Hong. So appearance. And Marwa says definitely remember activities. Okay, so we can put an appearance. Uh, decorations, we can think about that, or decor. Um, and then uh, absolutely, Marwa, you're right, the activities that happen there. Uh, and, of course, uh, the people. Marwa, I see that you uh, said that in Bagzad as well. So who goes there? The people, the attendees. Now, clearly, when we look at this card with these questions, uh, you already have the, these points embedded here. So who attends the ceremony and the age of the couples uh, when they marry, that's actually attendees, right? Uh, what type of clothing is usually worn? That's kind of what Hong said, the appearance of it, right? And then here, describe any special customs during the wedding ceremony. Now, for some of you, maybe the word customs is unfamiliar. Uh, customs means the tradition or clearly the activities, right? So the activities that happen, what people do, okay? Now notice, interestingly, the card does not ask you the location. So it doesn't say where does it usually happen. However, that would be a very, very smart uh, point to include because it gives the context for what you're saying. Okay, so absolutely. All right. Um, and your solemn, yeah, how uh, the event takes place in the culture, activities. That's all what we're talking about here. So, okay, now we're on the right track. What should I do next with this question? So I've identified it's an event. I know I need to talk about location, people, activities, what this event looks like. Um, what should I do next? What would be a smart way to think about this question? What would be a, a good strategy for a clear, well-structured, effective response that gets me a nice high band score? What should I do? And again, this is happening very, very quickly. Uh, Haung says, write structured notes. That's a very good piece of advice. So don't just write notes randomly, Haung. That's right. You should write them in somewhat of an order. Uh, Begzad says, choose a couple of points so don't get carried away. Uh, Begzad, that's good advice as well because with this question, um, of course, uh, weddings are quite familiar for people who take the exam. So we could probably talk for a lot more than just two minutes about a wedding ceremony in our country. Uh, so we need to be careful to have uh, well-chosen points and structured. Yeah, I agree with you, Begzod. You don't want to talk about the moon and the stars and everything in between uh, regarding weddings. So you have to be strategic, definitely. Uh, I think what would really, really help 
is to visualize it. So actually picture a wedding in your country from start to finish. So when you have such a big event as a wedding and there are chronological steps, does everybody know the meaning of chronological, what that means? So again, you want to visualize the wedding from start to finish, okay, in a chronological fashion or order, okay? Rahul says uh, sequence. Uh, chronos, Rahul, uh, means time. Chrono or chronos uh, is Latin for time. So it means time order. So what happens first, second, third? Uh, if you're jumping around in the wedding and you start by saying, and then the uh, bride tosses the flowers behind her, and then uh, they're in front of a priest or uh, a religious leader, and they tell each other their vows, and you're jumping around, it's going to be very confusing, and you will get a lower mark. So you want to visualize it. Okay, so let's go through. And uh, what would be the best to start with? So what would be the, the first point to consider? Okay, so how would I, what would I want to talk about first when my one minute is up and my two minute speaking begins, what would be the first few ideas to express to your examiner? What do you think you should start with? Okay, what should you start with? We still need our first sentence, Bagzad, but before that, what should we start with? Haung, this is a wedding ceremony. So let's jump back to uh, the picture here or the card. So here's the card. It's a typical marriage or wedding ceremony. What would I start with? Probably, well, you would choose a wedding ceremony, and I think, Bagzad, uh, the clear simplicity for this one, so choosing a simple wedding ceremony, would be the one that um, happens in your country, in uh, your uh, religion, of course right? So for your belief system, that would be the easiest here. Um, so other than that, I would probably start in the beginning by location. So uh, we have to choose our wedding ceremony. Um, let's do this together. Uh, so there's Christian weddings. Um, there's what other types of weddings are there? Help me out here, students. What kind of weddings? There's Buddhist weddings. Which I don't know how to spell, right? There's Buddhist weddings. There's Islamic weddings, absolutely. Okay, or Muslim, yeah. What else? Hindu or Punjabi weddings. Yes, that's right. All right. Um, so let's choose one. Let's choose one and just go with it. Um, you can uh, do a different one for practice at home if you wish. But for now, we'll just choose one. Um, Let's do something fun. So, of course, I'm familiar with Christian weddings. I know a little bit about um, Islamic and Hindu weddings and Punjabi weddings. Um, so uh, let's, try, uh, let's try a Hindu wedding. I think uh, Hindu and Punjabi weddings are quite the spectacle. They're quite big parties, so we'll go with those. Okay. All right. Um, so choose the one, of course, in the real exam without say, you would choose the one that's the closest to you, your culture, your religion. That will be the easiest to talk about, okay? Um, so let's learn a little bit here. I'm guessing I'm going to learn some information as well. Um, we have a pretty good uh, spread of uh, cultures among our members here as well. So I think we'll learn from each other. Uh, let's do a Hindu wedding. Let's try it. Anyway, it'll be a challenge for me as well. So, um, 
What is the location of a Hindu wedding? Okay. Actually, before we do this, <laughs> let me step back a little bit um, as uh, it might get tricky. So uh, how many uh, students um, are familiar with Hindu weddings? How many of our members? So if you are familiar with Hindi weddings, then say yes. Um, if you have no idea about that one, then say no. Your solemn says no. Okay, I just want to see, uh, we need to have at least a few students who are familiar to make this work. If not, we have to go with a different one. So Shalini says yes. Harminder says no. Patricio says no. Haung says no. Marwa says no. Okay, so we only have one yes so far. I definitely want to pick one that at least a few people are familiar with. Okay, Rehan says no. Okay, uh, it sounds like uh, that might be a little bit difficult w for us because obviously we don't have enough familiarity. So let's go with Punjabi. How many are familiar with Punjabi? Okay, say yes if you're familiar with Punjabi. Say no if you're not. And we'll try to pick one where we have a higher ratio. Shalini says yes. Ferdov says no. No, no. Okay. All right. Again, a lot of no's. Only one yes so far. We might have to go with a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, Rahul, that's what I'm going to do is do a Christian one here because I think that might be the best choice for us. So how about a Christian wedding? Who's familiar with a Christian wedding? Okay, so say yes if you're familiar with a Christian wedding. Okay, your solemn says yes. Shalini says no. Patricio says yes. Rahul says yep. Marwa says no. Yvonne says yes. Rehan says yes. Begzad says a bit. Okay, well, we have a lot more yeses there. So let's do that one. And then for homework, uh, you can do the one that you're more familiar with, okay? Haung says yes as well, and Kisi says a little bit. All right, so Christian wedding seems to be the one that most of you are more or less familiar with, so we'll do that one. Okay, um, so let's talk location then. Uh, we're, we're taking our notes here. We have that one-minute time. Um, where does a Christian wedding take place, usually? Of course, don't get really tricky. Weddings can take places in many many different venues, but we should just go with the tradition here. Notice how the question on the card also says usually marry, usually worn. So you want to go with the easier ones here. So it's in a church, yeah. Okay, um, so the wedding, uh, is it, okay, it's a church. Uh, anywhere else? So any other location that's used? Uh, other than a church, for the whole wedding ceremony. Now, I'm thinking here about the reception. The reception. Okay, where does the reception take place? Um, usually in a restaurant or some other venue. Okay. So, church for the wedding, and then um, the restaurant for the reception. Okay, sure. So the purpose? What's the purpose of getting married? Yeah, your solemn, it could be in a hotel for the reception as well. Um, so restaurant or hotel, that's a good suggestion, your solemn. Yeah. Yep, and what is the purpose? Why do people get married? Well, of course, to show the world they love each other, to signal the start of family life, right? Those are some reasons. Okay. Keep that one simple. Not too many questions on the card asking about that. Okay, um, so purpose, location, who goes there? Okay, yeah, Rahul, that's right. So who goes to the wedding? Who are the attendees? 
Relatives, sure. Friends and family. Community, neighbors, maybe. It's possible. Uh, co-workers, yeah, absolutely. Very good uh, for Dobbs. Yeah, people often do, if they're big weddings, invite some of their co-workers. Sure, it's possible. Um, who are the two most important people? The bride and the groom, Marwa, that's right. Let's not forget about them. Okay, so friends and family uh, of the bride and the groom. Um, the priest, yeah, absolutely. Yukian Lu, nice. So the priest, religious official. Okay, uh, fantastic. Anybody else at the wedding? There's, uh, there could be a couple more people at the wedding. If you're getting really clever, you might even think of wedding photographer, waiters, caterers for the reception, right? Okay, um, good. Now, uh, of course, you know, you have just one minute to prepare your notes, so you want to be quick. Get those, yeah, Kesey, the camera guy. It's the uh, photographer, okay? The wedding photographer is the specific word for that one, Kesey, as opposed to wedding guy. Okay, um, and then what happens there? Okay. So what happens at a wedding? This is where you want to be clever. Often, I'm actually very surprised that uh, when I do these part two interviews and the topic is an event, um, oftentimes students really don't speak enough about the activities. They don't go into enough details or explanations. Okay. So, uh, yeah, dancing. Now, this is where, so Haung says, okay, guys, don't be careful to stay structured. So especially when you're thinking about the activities, this is a really important part to keep structure, okay? So be structured here, okay? Especially when you are thinking about the activities. So let's try to do this in order. Um, what happens first? Okay, so what happens first? Let's really try to plan this out step by step. Okay, before we get into eating delicious food and dancing, what, what actually happens before that? So let's really go step by step here. Yeah, so Marwa says the bride and groom promise each other to share their happiness. So Marwa, that is wedding vows, okay? called a wedding vow. Now, uh, students, in the actual exam, you don't have enough time to write all of this. Um, you would just write the word vows, okay, or say vows. Um, before they even say the vows, what happens? Uh, you're solemn, very good. So special entrance for the bride and groom, okay? Again, really visualize. So I'm going to um, put this in a very structured way so you can clearly see it. Um, Okay, so the attendees first gather in the church and wait for the couple, right? Um, Begzad says the father of the bride uh, walks um, the bride down the center aisle. That's right, okay? Um, so the attendees gather and wait for the couple. The groom is present first. Then the bride makes a special entrance, usually with her father, yeah, then the vows, okay, um, then what happens after the vows, okay, ring exchange, yeah, very good, 
Excellent. That was Preeti. Brilliant, Preeti. Good job. So ring exchange, then what happens after the ring exchange? So let's really go step by step here. Ring exchange, what happens next? Okay, so Ferdov says that there's a priest speech. The priest speech actually happens um, after the bride arrives, right? So, yeah, ring exchange. After the ring exchange, the couple exits, right? So the couple exits. What happens after the ring exchange, though, before the couple exits? There's something that happens there. I'm surprised nobody said it so far. Yeah, there we go, Ferdovs. Very good. That's what we're waiting for. So Ferdov says they kiss each other. That's, that's tradition, right? Let's not leave that one out. So the kiss... Okay, and then the reception. Okay, dancing, speeches, cake. So we're moving along. Okay, so again, the very important point that I want to make with this is when possible. And so if you have a part two event where you're talking about a wedding or you're talking about a birthday or a New Year's celebration, okay, or a business meeting, uh, definitely a very powerful strategy to keep yourself focused, speaking clearly and getting a high band score is when you're thinking about the activities that happen at the uh, event, make sure you're structured. So when you write down your notes, try to uh, not write them randomly. If you do, so let's say that you um, put the uh, kiss a little bit earlier. So, you know, your brain's going a mile a minute, you're nervous, and you're like, oh, it's really hard to keep this, uh, this order uh, when I have time pressure and that examiner is sitting in front of me. So you might, uh, you might not be able to write it down as effectively because, of course, the human brain is not always so linear. So then what you can do, I'm just uh, purposefully messing up the order here. You'll see why in a second. So let's say that... Uh, that you know you're you're writing a little bit less organized because of that pressure then what you do exactly Haung. so Haung says then when you have all your points quickly take a couple of seconds and mark it with numbers so you know what's first second third fourth and that's a really good strategy so then after you're finished you can go one okay and then you can go two then you can go three, and then you can go four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so quickly use numbers to mark it, and that will really help you during your two minutes to know where you're located and what you still need to talk about. Is that clear, that strategy that I showed you there? So is it clear that it's really important to keep the activities in order um, because that will help your coherence, your coherence score will be much higher. And um, even if you don't write uh, in a chronological order because your mind is racing and it's pulling information as, uh, as it finds it, uh, then uh, make sure to uh, just put it into the correct 
uh, order using numbers. So number order them, okay? It's very, very useful, especially for this kind of activities, all right? Good, okay, I'm glad that's clear for everyone. Okay, now, as uh, a couple of you said earlier, we need to uh, have our first sentence ready. So let's come up with our first sentence. So what would be a good way to uh, begin our response when the examiner starts? We'll get it in there, Hung. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll get it in there. Um, so what would, be a, what would be a good first step? What would be a good first sentence uh, when uh, the two-minute speaking time starts? I would probably start with the location. Okay. Yeah, so Marwa says, I'm going to talk about the Christian marriage ceremony. That works, so you're identifying that it's a Christian marriage ceremony. That's fine, Marwa. I might even uh, take it one step further and immediately get the location in there. So the most traditional Christian weddings are held in a church, um, which denotes the... Uh, religious okay so they're adding a little bit more detail, all right? Waiting for those first sentences. Don't be shy, students. Just throw it out there, whatever comes to mind. So the most traditional Christian weddings are held in a church, which denotes the beliefs of the bride and or the groom, uh, perhaps a Catholic or a Protestant church, right? Yvonne says, I'd like to describe a Christian wedding, which is traditional in my country. Yeah, very good. Uh, and Yvonne, um, always uh, be specific. So even instead of saying country, say Russia, right? So I'd like to describe a Christian wedding, which is traditional in Russia, most commonly Roman Catholic, right? I believe um, Russia is mostly Roman Catholic, right? So you can be even more specific. The more specific and detailed you are with your answers, the higher the band score will be, the better your lexical resource and coherence marks will be. Okay, great. All right, um, now, what can I say next? Begzad says, the most typical wedding ceremony in my country, Canada, is a uh, Christian, which is held in a church. Very good. Kesey says, I still have a vivid memory of my cousin's wedding uh, marriage ceremony, which was held in a 100-year-old church in my hometown. Okay, Kesey, that's okay. Yep, yeah, you can make it personal too. Uh, but Kesey, do be careful here. The question, and I'll go back to this. I think you came late, Kesey, so you didn't see it. It says, describe a typical marriage ceremony in your country. This question is not asking, describe a, a marriage ceremony that you attended, okay? So I would probably stay away from that, Kesey. If you use a personal example during the two minutes, it's okay. But notice that this is not actually asking for your experience, but rather it's asking for a usual ceremony. So make sure not to confuse those two. Be very, very careful with the card specifics or the questions specifics, okay? Ferdov says there are many types of weddings and one of them is a Christian wedding which is held in a church. Um, for Dobbs, I would probably avoid saying there are many types of weddings. The card is asking for a typical marriage ceremony in your country. If you respond by saying there are many types of weddings, it's confusing. 
because I'm thinking, well, I'm just asking you for a typical wedding. So if it's a Christian one that you're going to choose, just choose it and talk about that one. Okay. So the one that works for you. Okay. Your solemn says marriage is one of the most important events. Uh, and in my country, uh, Eritrea, it occurs in a church, uh, usually Christian Orthodox weddings, the religion of the majority. Um, your solemn again, uh, so you only need about half of that information. Um, you don't need to say it's one of the most important events. The card is not asking you about the importance of the event. So really stay focused, okay? Harminder says, here I would like to talk about uh, Christian marriage of my friend, which I attended last year. Again, Harminder, uh, same advice as to Kisi. Be very careful. The card says, describe a typical marriage ceremony in your country. So it means that this is a question that's asking you about a general uh, explanation, not a past situation. You have to be really careful about that, students, because your band score will go down if you start talking about a wedding that you attended. Uh, connected to this, here's my question. What grammar should I use mostly in this response? What would be my choice of grammar for most of my sentences? Okay, Begzod says passive voice maybe. Um, yeah, Begzod, there could be some passive, but I think it's a lot of active because it's an action. Uh, Marwa says present and Kisi says present as well. Yeah, definitely. And that's, you know, we've talked about that in previous classes where you need to uh, identify the... Um, grammar that will help you so here yeah absolutely students you should focus on using present tense to express general situations also you would probably use a lot of uh, conditions okay so present present perfect as well as conditions Okay. Good. So that's important. So Kisi um, and um, uh, who was the student before that started talking about their friend's wedding? Um, Harminder. So Kisi and Harminder, one way that you can avoid uh, trapping yourself in talking off topic about a wedding that you went to is just when you see the topic of the question, figure out the tense, and then you realize that here you're not going to use a lot of past tense to talk about your friend's wedding, okay? All right, good. So um, let's keep going. Okay, so now we will continue with the response. So let's build on each other, okay? Here we go. The most traditional Christian weddings are held in a church which denotes the beliefs of the bride or the groom, perhaps Catholic, or Protestant, okay? Uh, what would make sense? So let's keep going here. Okay. What should we write after? Uh, Shalini, um, let's stick with the uh, Christian wedding for this class. And then Shalini, what you can do is you can... Um, uh, talk about a uh, Punjabi wedding, record it on your phone and send it to me and I will gladly listen to it and mark it for you. So that can be a homework exercise for you members to uh, talk about a different kind of wedding ceremony. Okay. All right. Um, for Dobbs says, talk about preparation. Yeah, for Dobbs, absolutely, right? So I agree with you. That's what I was hoping one of you would realize is that here... Uh, the card gives you a good start. Um, usually these first two questions on the card are a good start point. Okay, so the age couples usually marry. What type of clothing is usually worn? Um, that's a good start point. So uh, these three questions can be your first 20 to th seconds, maybe 30 seconds at most. Okay. 
And then uh, this is actually, it kind of looks strange on the card because students think that this is what they should talk about the most. Oftentimes, it's actually this question here, this last question, that should be the majority of uh, your um, your response. Uh, Shalini, just send me a recording, not not a WhatsApp, unless you want to book a speaking uh, class with me, which you can do in your my student account. Um, so this should make up about one minute. Okay, these first three should make up. 20, 30 seconds. This is the context. So you've explained that it happens in a church. Now you should just, in a couple of sentences, answer these questions, and then we get to the majority of it, right? So uh, let's answer these questions, okay? And again, don't overcomplicate. Just keep it simple. So the age that couples get married and what clothing is worn, all right? Give me some sentences with that. Okay, I'm going to start writing as well. So we're moving along here. Okay, so that's what I would do. Um, these days, most couples marry between the ages of 25 and 35 after they have graduated university and started work. Uh, Marwa, can you speak more than two minutes? No, the examiner will stop you, Marwa. So usually the examiners will stop you at two minutes or less at a minute and a half. Okay. If you speak only for one minute, Marwa, it could affect your score, especially if the examiner has not stopped you. Uh, with a big topic or a big event like a wedding ceremony where you can really talk easily for two minutes or even more, you should speak until the examiner stops you. So give a complete answer, a complete idea, but keep giving more details about the uh, wedding ceremony until the examiner stops you because uh, there is a lot of information that you can say here that's answering this question, okay? So Kesey says it is common for most of the couples to marry at the age of 25 to 28 Usually the bride wears a white dress and the groom uh, a white suit. Okay, uh, usually a black suit, I think, Kesey, but sure, it doesn't matter. Uh, they will not judge you uh, for saying a white suit, so you can say that if in your country it's a white suit, fine. Absolutely. Okay. So before going to the church, the bride and the groom, who are around 25 years of age, have to go through a medical check. Um, hmm, Bagzad, that's an interesting point. I'm not sure about that. Uh, and sign documents. I think you might be going into too much detail there. Careful, okay. Uh, Rahul says, the age for the bride in India varies from 20 to 25, whereas grooms tie the knot between 24 to 28. A bride usually wears a bright white princess dress, and the groom comes in a black lethal suit. Wow, Rahul, some really nice writing there. Good for you. You get my huge thumbs up. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so, all people who attend the wedding are expected to dress in formal attire and put on their best clothes. The bride has a beautiful white wedding gown and the man or the groom 
wears a black tuxedo. Okay, there is probably a few new words there for you members, so you uh, might want to jot those down to learn for later. So it is called a white wedding gown, not really a princess dress, although I can understand that. So Rahul, princess dress, it's good description, but the examiner will catch that you don't know the actual expression or the collocation of wedding gown. It's a wedding gown. And uh, the, for the man, it, suit is okay. They're pro if you say it's a black suit, uh, a lot of times these days men do wear just a simpler black suit. Uh, but even more fancy is the black tuxedo. Okay, it's the tuxedo has that long part on the back. It's got more layers. It's cut a little bit sharper. All right. Okay. Sure. So that's good. We're moving along nicely. Okay, so now we have the location, we have the age, we have what people wear. Want to add a little bit more detail? We can say the remainder of the invitees wear dresses for women and suits for men. Okay. And then we might want to look at the card. Who attends the ceremony? We can move into that really nicely. I'm going to move along here a little bit. Uh, members so we can get more of this done. I think you have the idea now. So just keep writing sentences. I'm going to go from my response to your response and I'll make some corrections as we go along. So just keep pace with me. Imagine that we're running a marathon together in this response and I'm writing my response, you're writing your response and I'll move back and forth between the two and give you feedback, okay? Just so you can see how I would answer and also get some correction. Okay. So, in many cases, these weddings host around a hundred to a hundred and five. Uh, let's say between 50 to 100 people, including the family of the couple or the families of the couple, as well as their friends and coworkers. Of course, a religious official such as a priest is present and perhaps a cameraman or two who have been hired to record the festivities. Okay, all right. Moving along nicely. So, uh, Preeti says, usually most of the couples marry after the age of 25 when they started earning and the bride wears a long white gown and the groom wears a black suit. Preeti, that is some nice clean grammar from you in that sentence. Good for you. Okay, I know I'm uh, sometimes picking on you for your grammar, so you, I see you're practicing. Good. Uh, Amrit says, people from both sides of the family are invited to... Uh, participate in the wedding. Uh, usually some invitees organize a special performance to make the wedding spectacular. Amrit, that's good. Okay, it works. 
All right. Uh, Begzod says, usually in these weddings, there are often close to 150 people, including both relatives and parents of the couples, singers, neighbors, and colleagues, as well as photographers. Begzod, really nice, okay? Very good list of people who would be present at the wedding. 150, sure, 100, 150, 200. Those are all realistic numbers, so that's great. Uh, Kisi says, at the ceremony, the attendees are the couple's families, co-workers, friends, and a religious official, of course. Kisi, good. Yeah, very good. Okay, fantastic. So different ways of saying the same idea. All of those are high band. Okay, so you're doing a good job. Students, your uh, English is really improving. I'm very, very proud of you. Uh, Rahul says, of course, family members uh, wearing smiles on their face and close friends with enthusiasm and other guests with excitement and joy uh, attend this uh, holy matrimony as well as give their blessings to the couples. Rahul, really nice writing. I like how you're putting adverbs of manner to give more description in there, like enthusiasm. Um, and uh, including some nice words there. Rahul, I corrected some of your uh, sentences, made them more natural, so pay attention to that. Maybe review it at a later time. Okay, great. All right, uh, now comes the events, right? So first, the attendees gather in the church, in anticipation for the arrival of the bride. The groom waits patiently at the altar for the father of the bride to walk his future, his daughter, down the center aisle. Okay, so now we start going through those steps of what happens at the ceremony, okay? So once the bride arrives and the father takes his seat at the front of the church. The priest gives a speech before the bride and groom exchange their vows. The Holy Union of Matrimony is sealed with the exchange of rings and a kiss. Afterward, the husband and wife walk out of the church, back down the center aisle, being cheered on by the attendees. It is customary afterwards to gather at a hotel or restaurant for a reception. Okay, so I'm just flying along there a little bit, members, uh, before we run out of time, just to kind of show you the fluency and the connection of ideas. And here I'm not quite done yet, so I can talk more about what happens at the reception. 
but I'm definitely in the right direction. So students, before we wrap up today, just repeat after me, okay? So repeat after me. The most traditional Christian weddings are held in a church which denotes the beliefs of the bride and or the groom, perhaps Catholic, maybe Protestant. These days, most couples marry between the ages of 25 and 35 after they have graduated university and started work. All people who attend the wedding are expected to dress in formal attire and put on their best clothes. The bride has a beautiful white wedding gown and the groom wears a black tuxedo. The remainder of the invitees wear dresses for women and suits for men. In many cases, these weddings host between 50 to 100 people, including the families of the couple as well as their friends and co-workers. Of course, a religious official such as a priest is present and perhaps a cameraman or two who have been hired to record the festivities. First, the attendees gather in the church in anticipation for the arrival of the bride. The groom waits patiently at the altar for the father of the bride to walk his daughter down the center aisle. Once the bride arrives and the father takes his seat at the front of the church, the priest gives a speech before the bride and groom exchange their vows. The holy union of matrimony is sealed with the exchange of rings and a kiss. Afterward, the husband and wife walk out of the church back down the center aisle being cheered on by the attendees. It is customary to then gather at a hotel or restaurant for a reception. Okay. All right, members, you've done a fantastic job. Really, you have. I can definitely tell that your uh, English is improving rapidly. You're all very ambitious students and you will reap the rewards for it. You will have a lot of great opportunities in life, in work, in love. And remember, when you're talking about events, especially with the activities, have structure in your notes, okay? If you write the activities randomly and frantically in the one minute preparation time, just put numbers in front of the activities to help guide uh, your structure during your two minute response time. All right, in 30 minutes, everyone, uh, listening practice for the IELTS exam coming up. Begzod, Rahul, thanks for your question. Uh, Begzod, Kisi, Marwa, Haung, Preeti, thank you so much for all of your contributions. Shalini, uh, homework for this one, try it on your own. Record it on your phone. Send it to me as an MP3 recording. I will tell you how you did, okay? So I'll give you a band score estimate. Uh, send that to adrian at aehelp.com. And everyone watching, be sure to check us out on our websites for great IELTS examples and strategies. aehelp.com for academic. G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for general. That's it for now. See you all soon.